on World News Tonight. Facing the heat, India now grapples to find water as unprecedented heat waves dries up most of the rivers. New misses, the virus without borders keeps spreading and with that the FDA okays booster shots for children to boost immunity levels. A leave bill. Women will be offered unlimited menstrual leave every month if they suffer severe period pain in Spain. And ready riders. Participants battle on streets of London in the first ever electric scooter championship. This is Ada Derana World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here is Suzanne Chanelli. A very good evening and thank you for joining us on World News Tonight. We begin tonight's broadcast with neighbouring India. Acute water crisis in parts of India has left people struggling for water and forcing them to restore the water tankers for their survival while also battling a relentless heat wave. We have Abdan World News Special Correspondent Gayatri Gunasekar who joins us now from Delhi in India for more details. Gayatri, over to you. Yes, Shenali, the river Yamuna is on the verge of drying up, which is likely to worsen the water crisis in Delhi. Residents of Basant Bihar area in Indian capital of New Delhi put locks on bells and canisters to prevent it from getting stolen. The crisis is as severe in central Bhopal city. People allege they have not got water for nearly a week and the quality of scant water available is not good. Residents of a locality were seen lining up at a hand pump to get water. Water crisis is not a new phenomenon in India. Many parts of India experience water crisis. The crisis further deepens in months of May and June as they are the hottest months in the country. Though parts of countries north, south and west have already registered temperatures in excess of 40 degrees Celsius. Back to you, Shanali. All right, thank you. That was Adhidharana World News Special Correspondent Gayatri Gunasekar reporting from Delhi in India. Boris Johnson's government agreed the trade deal with the European Union in 2019 after the Brexit vote, but a row over its impact on trade has created a block on forming a developed government in Northern Ireland. Liz Truss has said a new law would be introduced to change the post-Brexit trade deal for Northern Ireland. Britain is taking steps to break a deadlock with the EU over post-Brexit trade with Northern Ireland, but it may just inflame tensions further. Speaking in Parliament on Tuesday, Foreign Secretary Liz Truss said a new law would ease the flow of trade without breaking international agreements. The bill will ensure that goods moving and staying within the UK are freed of unnecessary bureaucracy through our new green channel. This respects Northern Ireland's place in the UK, in its customs territory and protects the UK internal market. At the same time, it ensures that goods destined for the EU undergo the full checks and controls applied under EU law. Prime Minister Boris Johnson agreed the protocol that governs such trade in 2019. It was meant to allow Britain to leave the EU single market without controls being reimposed on the border between Northern Ireland and the Irish Republic. In effect, it created a border between Northern Ireland and the rest of the UK instead, something London now calls unworkable. It's also always been fiercely opposed by pro-union parties in Belfast. Democratic Unionist Party leader Geoffrey Donaldson said Tuesday's news was overdue. Therefore, we hope to see progress on a bill in order to deal with these matters in days and weeks, not months. A dispute over trade arrangements has stalled power sharing between unionist and nationalist parties in Belfast. The EU called any attempt by London to unilaterally change the protocol wholly unacceptable. Negotiator Maros Sefcovic said Brussels would respond with all means at its disposal. Menstrual leave is currently offered only to a small number of countries across the globe, and amongst them are South Korea and Indonesia. Spain took a step as the cabinet approved a bill that grants paid medical leave for women who suffer from severe period pain, becoming the first European country to advance such legislation. Spain could soon offer paid time off for women who have painful periods. 
The country's leftist coalition government approved a draft bill on Tuesday that would make it the first country in Europe to offer state-funded paid menstrual leave and will also aim to reinforce abortion rights by guaranteeing access to abortion across the country. Those behind the proposed law hope it will help destigmatize menstrual health. Irene Montero is the country's equality minister. Se acabó ir a trabajar con dolor. Working in pain is over. Taking pills before work and trying to hide that we are suffering incapacitating pain is over. Every woman who needs it will be able to make use of this temporary leave for painful, incapacitating menstrual periods. The bill is already provoking a debate about whether the paid leave rule will hamper women more than help them in the workplace. Claire Van Daye is a fitness instructor who suffers with endometriosis, symptoms of which can include incapacitating menstrual pain. The law is good because it recognizes that the problem exists, but unfortunately we mustn't forget long, abundant and painful periods that are incapacitating are a symptom that there's something else that needs to be treated and cured. It could be endometriosis, polycystic ovaries, myomas, cancer, it could be any of these problems. So it's not about normalizing it and saying, well, if they have painful periods then take some time off and it will be over. No, because because the following month is the same and each time a woman's health worsens. The draft bill could take months to be approved. It will go to a public hearing before another reading in the Cabinet and a vote in the lower House of Parliament. During his trip to Japan next week, U.S. President Joe Biden is expected to formally launch the Indo-Pacific Economic Framework, his administration's main economic policy agenda in the region. Early next week, U.S. President Joe Biden will launch a long-awaited economic initiative aimed at increasing Washington's involvement in Asia. Commerce Secretary Gina Raimondo said Tuesday the U.S. and its allies will establish the Indo-Pacific Economic Framework during President Biden's visit to Asia from May 20th to the 24th, a trip that will take him to Japan and South Korea. She further explained that the Biden administration is extremely enthusiastic about the initiative, which is seen as a way to counter China's growing influence across Asia. Announced late last year, the framework is Washington's first attempt to create a large, multilateral, Asia-focused economic strategy since the Trump administration withdrew from the Trans-Pacific Partnership in 2017. Raimondo added that there is a significant demand from countries in the Indo-Pacific for the U.S. to be more present and to adopt a more affirmative economic strategy. Although the specific details have yet to be disclosed, the Biden administration says the framework will not include lower tariffs or better access to U.S. markets. It explained the framework has numerous pillars, fair and resilient trade, supply chain resilience, infrastructure, clean energy and decarbonization, as well as tax and anti-corruption measures. The framework is said to be joined by U.S. partners and allies in the region, including South Korea, Japan, Australia and New Zealand. Large economies within the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, such as Singapore, are also likely to join. President Joe Biden also called out what he branded the poison of white supremacist ideology behind a deadly mass shooting in Buffalo, New York, and said that racism is being stoked for political gain. On a trip to Buffalo, New York, President Joe Biden on Tuesday condemned white supremacists, the media, the Internet and politics for spreading racist conspiracy theories as he mourned the killing of 10 black people in a mass shooting at a grocery store. What happened here is simple and straightforward. Terrorism. Terrorism. Domestic terrorism. Peyton Gendron, an 18-year-old white teenager, is accused of opening fire with a semi-automatic rifle in a predominantly black neighborhood of Buffalo. Authorities say he carried out an act of racially motivated violent extremism on Saturday at the Topps Friendly Market when he shot 13 people. Gendron has been jailed without bail on a charge of first-degree murder. He pleaded not guilty. White supremacy is a poison. It's a poison. We need to say as clearly and forcefully as we can that the ideology of white supremacy has no place in America. None. 
Investigators have said they are looking into Gendron's online postings, which include a 180-page manifesto he is believed to have authored that outlines the Great Replacement conspiracy theory that white people were intentionally being replaced by minorities in the United States and elsewhere. The idea is now surging through some conservative political circles. I hate that through the media and politics, the Internet, has radicalized, angry, alienated, lost, and isolated individuals into falsely believing that they will be replaced, that's the word, replaced, by the other, by people who don't look like them. I call on all Americans to reject the lie. And I condemn those who spread the lie for power, political gain, and for profit. But the visit also showcased how little Biden has achieved in stamping out a rise in white supremacist groups, curbing gun violence, or passing meaningful gun control measures, with many Republican lawmakers blocking efforts to limit gun sales. Before leaving Buffalo, Biden told reporters that he realizes it will be hard to get legislation passed. The answer is going to be very difficult. It's going to be very difficult, but I'm not going to give up trying. It's going to a short commercial break. We'll be back soon with more world news. Welcome back to World News Tonight. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration authorized the use of a booster shot of Pfizer and BioNTech's COVID vaccine for children aged 5 to 11. The U.S. CDC still needs to sign off on the shots before they can be administered. As cases of COVID-19 start to rise again across the U.S., the U.S. Food and Drug Administration on Tuesday authorized the booster shots for young kids. A third shot of the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine will now be available to 5 to 11-year-olds, though the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention still needs to sign off. The moves come as health officials have been urging all Americans to get boosters, as data has shown that vaccine effectiveness starts to wane over time. But it remains unclear how many parents will opt for a third dose for their young kids. Just 29 percent of children in that age group are fully vaccinated, according to CDC data. In a statement, the FDA commissioner acknowledged that while COVID tends to be less severe in kids, the Omicron wave has seen more kids getting sick with the disease and being hospitalized. Children below the age of five are not yet eligible for a COVID-19 vaccine in the United States. New numbers out of North Korea shows the outbreak there is showing no sign of slowing down. The crisis has prompted the North to ask Russia for ways Moscow might be able to help the regime. North Korea reported 232,880 new fever cases on Tuesday, with six more deaths. That brings the total to over 1.7 million and 62 deaths as of 6 p.m. Tuesday. The state-run Korean Central News Agency said on Wednesday that North Korean leader Kim Jong-un discussed nationwide antivirus measures during a Politburo meeting. He criticized the regime's inability to cope with the outbreak and blasted senior officials once again for revealing the North's vulnerabilities. As infections skyrocket, the regime has reached out to one of its closest allies. North Korea's ambassador to Russia, Shin hong Chal, met on Tuesday with Russia's deputy foreign minister, Igor Murgilov, in Moscow. They discussed ways to contain the virus, as well as other bilateral issues. Russian ambassadors in Pyongyang, meanwhile, are reported to have been under a strict lockdown ever since the virus broke out. The World Health Organization is also concerned about the situation. The WHO's emergencies director, Mike Ryan, said Tuesday that it's certainly worrying if countries like North Korea are not using the available tools like vaccines to contain COVID-19. He added there's always a higher risk of new variants emerging if there's unchecked transmission. But according to the organization, North Korea has not yet officially reported the outbreak to the WHO. Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison and opposition leader Anthony Albanese have been treating carefully when it comes to talk about climate change ahead of the election. But the issue is weighing on bushfire survivors as they decide their vote. It's been two years since Australia's deadly black summer fires ripped through its southeast coast. Schoolteacher Samantha Neeshaw remembers the experience vividly. 
as she took refuge in her swimming pool, sucking on air from a scuba tank as flames blazed overhead. Now, regrowth has sprung from the charred tree trunks. But government inaction on climate change has left her frustrated ahead of the general election. Wary of alienating voters on either side, Prime Minister Scott Morrison and opposition leader Anthony Albanese have been treading carefully when it comes to talk about weaning the nation off fossil fuels. The coalition government's 2030 emissions reduction target of 26% and the Labour opposition's target of 43% both fall short of meeting the 50% aim that the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change said is needed to keep global warming under 2 degrees. Debate about climate change has long been fraught in Australia, among the world's largest exporters of coal and natural gas. A former resident evacuated from Lake Conjola during the fires, who gave his name as Barry, said jobs and cost of living over climate change were his top concerns when filling out the ballot this weekend. In a poll published last May, the Lowy Institute found that concern over climate change has increased, with 60% of Australians agreeing that global warming is a serious and pressing problem. Retired Major General and Canberra's former Emergency Services Chief Peter Dunn has actively called on Australian governments, past and present, to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. He was also one of the members who warned Scott Morrison of the impending Black Summer bushfires. Attorneys for Johnny Depp attempted to discredit Amber Heard's abuse claims in the former couple's defamation trial, introducing a knife she gave as a gift to the Pirates of the Caribbean star and affectionate notes she wrote to him. You were the jealous one in this relationship, weren't you, Miss Heard? I think he was indicating I was jealous of his career. Attorneys for Johnny Depp continued their cross-examination of Amber Heard on Tuesday, attempting to discredit her claims of physical and sexual abuse. Depp's lawyer, Camille Vasquez, asked jurors to examine the knife Heard bought for the actor in 2012. Yes, that's it. Having testified that Depp had already become violent toward her by that time. That's the knife you gave to the man who was hitting you, right, Miss Heard? I wasn't worried he was going to stab me with it when I gave it to him, that's for certain. But you gave it to him while he was abusing you, allegedly. I gave it to him that year. Depp has testified that he never hit Heard and argued that she was the abuser in their relationship. His attorney also read from a journal containing love notes Heard wrote to Depp, including one from August of 2015. Here you write, quote, I'm sorry I shook the wheels so hard. I'm sorry we've tested the shocks and brakes to this point. God damn, I love you, Johnny. I hate that you're hurting. I love you more than anything. Let me prove it. I need you. I love you. Slim. Did I read that correctly? Yeah, another example of me trying to fix it. I was always trying to fix it. Fix it by apologizing for your bad behavior? I tried everything. I tried apologizing, I tried reading, I tried therapist, I tried everything to fix it. But yet you couldn't change like you told Dr. Cowan, right? I couldn't change my relationship. Depp is suing Heard for $50 million, saying she defamed him by writing a Washington Post piece claiming she was a victim of domestic abuse. Heard has countersued for $100 million, arguing that Depp smeared her by calling her a liar. Welcome back to World News Tonight. For more news, let's take you around the world in a minute. Rescue workers have found no survivors in a rescue chamber deep inside a flooded zinc mine in Burkina Faso, all but extinguishing hope that eight missing miners could still be alive after a month. Japan's economy contracted in the first three months of 2022, the first time in two quarters as COVID-19 restrictions hit the service sector and price surged. British consumer price inflation hit an annual rate of 9% in April, the highest since official estimates began in late 1980s. With new COVID-19 cases declining continuously in Shanghai, some supermarkets in urban areas have reopened in-person services and some subway stations under construction have also resumed work. The Hangzhou Asian Para Games scheduled for October have been postponed due to concerns over COVID-19. This follows the postponement of the Asian Games originally set for September.
And that's all the news we got for you tonight. Join us again tomorrow for more news around the globe. In case you have missed to watch any of the stories we aired tonight, you can always rewatch by catching us on our YouTube page, youtube.com slash Adhadarana English. We are leaving you tonight with London hosting their first ever East Quarter Championship race and racers just zoom their way through. Thank you for watching us again. Stay safe and have a good night.